Okay. Um, anyway, I was visiting and it was, um, it was powerful. You, you guys were just amazing. Everyone prayed over me and I'm just so grateful. So yeah, happy to be back in town. Okay. I thought I, I'm not good at names, but I do remember faces. Yes. <laughs> yep. And she's with us for the next couple of weeks. Awesome. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So always a joy to have you with us and just, uh, it's such a encouragement to us too. You know, that's how the body works. He just, it just, that word is born in our, our hearts and our life, that word of life. And it just, it just spreads. There's a ripple effect about it. That's a good word. And, uh, it just, you know, I, I can see, I can see what the apostle Paul was saying now about, you know, there's no greater joy than when I see people walking in the truth, walking in the truth of God's life. And it's like, it's something you see, okay? And not that we're not going to have our moments, you know, or whatever, but it's just like you can see that word of life that's birthed in people's hearts and lives, you know, as their hearts are persuaded to believe what God believes, what he's always believed. <laughs> he's always believed it, you know? And it's just that, that we're coming out of this... Uh, way of not seeing and we're we're seeing we're, our minds and hearts are being illuminated and we're beginning to see and in that believing we're experiencing his life so i wouldn't trade it for nothing i mean what is there else to trade it for death yeah. <laughs> there's nothing else really yeah and just being in the first year really it's been eight months for me and i just everything is new like the whole world is new. Uh -huh. It's just wild to me. And it's, it's yeah. true. Like what the Bible says about being reborn and your eyes being open, the veil being removed. Mm. It's so true. <laughs> and I just want the whole world to know. And that's, I guess the hardest part is now, you know, my relationship with people that don't, that don't know what I know. It's, it's yeah. difficult. Yeah. It's the fruit of that. You know, like we were talking about Thanksgiving and, and rejoicing and just wanting it's like the woman at the well, when it was born in her, that word was born in her, she went and told everyone, you know, she couldn't, yeah. it. and it was, it was a different kind of message than what we used to be driven by, you know, like turn or burn. No, it's, it's <laughs> like, come and see <laughs> that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good, right? It's a total yeah. different way, you know? Cause I've been, yeah. I've been on the other way too. You know, <laughs> I used to uh, preach on street corners, you know, turn or burn, you know? And, uh, yeah. that was when I was in a state of confusion. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, a much better way. Amen. We all had to start, we all had to start somewhere faster. Yeah. And I think so, like myself, I'm a, I'm ashamed to mention the things that I came through, you know, to get to where I'm at now. Yeah. But God's, you know, he knows where we're at. And uh, that's the the beauty of it, too, is is the more we know our father, our heavenly father, yes. and understand him, his heart for us. You know, he doesn't despise us in our, no, way. No. you know, it's like a Thank kid riding a, bike, riding, riding a bike, you know. Or taking his yeah. first steps, you know, they're gonna fall. And uh exactly. they're, so <laughs> they're just in the process. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Any right. any part of it, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just praise God out where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. And Thank you me. know what? A year from now, I won't be where I am right now. And you sure. know, people say, Oh, you should write a book. I'm like, no way. Because I constantly <laughs> have to be changing it because I'm we're changing. We're constantly changing. Amen. If you think you've arrived, you're deceived. My mm -hmm. thought would have been that I would have thrown the book away. Oh, definitely. <laughs> you know, the yeah. script, remember what Paul says. Paul said, if any man thinks he knows anything, let him know this. He knows, he knows nothing. nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> nothing. 
Yeah. Like Sir Kruger used to say, if the you of today doesn't think the you of 10 years ago was a heretic, you probably haven't grown much. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. That takes a minute, don't it? Yeah. Ooh. We've all been there, done that, bought many t shirts, you know, but it's uh it's a process. And we're all still in that process, you know. That's right. And that's why I can understand why he says, basically, he says, give each other room to grow. My goodness, you yeah. know, give each other yeah. space to grow, <laughs> you know, because we're all still coming into, and listen, as good as it is now, and it's awesome, there's still much more to see. If you can even, we can understand that there's, I mean, we haven't even gotten started yet. You know but, what the big thing is for me is that uh, we could uh, give grace to all Yes. If we could get grace to all people. <laughs> well, you know, our track record <laughs> it, it is uh, humbling. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you know what? When you've really fallen flat on your face and said stupid stuff, yeah. it gives you more grace for other people. Oh, yeah. That's true. Well, uh, I don't want to do it deliberately. <laughs> I've, I've said my share of stupid stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I heard somebody say this morning, a dead man doesn't know he's dead. He feels no pain. Just everybody else feels the pain. Mm. And he, he said, he's a man that is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. He doesn't know he's stupid, but yeah. everybody else does. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. You that... know, go, go ahead. Go ahead. That um something I've been just meditating on day after day after day after day, and I just haven't been able to get it out of my mind. Mm was that scripture that I brought up last week in Isaiah 54 in verse 14. In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, yes. for thou shalt not fear. Mm. And from terror, for it shall not come near thee. In righteousness, you will be established. Mm -hmm. And because you're, and what is righteousness? Righteousness is the state of one as he ought to be. Yeah. What is the state of one as he ought to be? Face to face with the Father. Yeah. So as you see him, you're looking at pure truth. You know the truth. You know the truth about God. You know the truth about yourself. Therefore, no oppression can come near you. Yeah. Oppression comes from believing the lie. Yeah. You can only be oppressed if you believe the lie. Yeah. But you can't believe the lie when you're face to face with the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what got me stuck there was the scripture in first John four, I think it's 17, uh, 18, perfect love casts out all fear. And so I'm like, wait a minute. Love is the antidote for fear, but here it's saying in righteousness, thou shalt be established. And because of this righteousness, um, you won't fear. And so it's like, the scripture says in Romans 1, 16, it says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but therein, well, well, let me back up. It, I want to say it straight. Thank you, Lord. 
I'm not ashamed. Mm. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation mm -hmm. to everyone that believes, the to the Jew first and, the and also the Greek. Okay? The gospel of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. is the power of God unto, okay? And it's going, it's it's the path to something else, okay? It's to something, okay? Mm -hmm. The gospel. What is the gospel? What is the gospel of Jesus Christ? That's what is very important for us to understand mm -hmm. because it says therein, in this gospel is the righteousness of God revealed. Mm. Okay? So the righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. What is the gospel? When Jesus stood before Pilate and Pilate said, are you a king? He said, for this reason, I came into the world to bear witness to the truth. Mm -hmm. What is the truth? Mm -hmm. What is the truth that Jesus Christ came to bear witness to? God so loved the world. Jesus was a witness to the love of God because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So the gospel of Jesus Christ is the gospel of God's love for us in that he sent his son to die our death, to be buried with him, to raise from the dead with him, and to ascend with him to the right hand of the father. That's the gospel. Mm. Now, if you believe that gospel, that God so loved you, that in Christ you died, was buried, ascended, uh, rose from the dead, and ascended and are sitting at the right hand of the Father. When your heart believes that, you know, wow, I'm righteous. I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. But it's in the gospel of God's love. Yeah. That the righteousness of God is revealed. And it's in that righteousness when you know who you are that nothing can cause you to fear. Yes. You're made perfect in love. But love, see that perfect love? It says, um, perfect love casts out all fear. Well, perfect love has revealed to you your state of being. Mm -hmm. But you're righteous. You yeah. see what I mean? But it was all born out of that love. And that scripture in um, 1 John 4, this is so, so good. But <laughs> it's got to be made real in our life. Yeah. It's got to become our reality. Absolutely. It says, I love this. And it really just shows you what I just said. In verse 16 of uh, 1 John 4, it says, we have known and believe oh. the love that God has for us. Yeah. See, we believe the love of God, which gave to us our righteousness. Right. But it was in the message of God's love for us that our righteousness was discovered. Amen? Yeah. And it says, herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because mm -hmm. as he is, so are we in this world. Mm -hmm. That's where our boldness comes from. Righteousness. As he is, so mm -hmm. are we. See, the righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel of God's love for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just not good enough to believe, oh, God, love me. 
No, you got to let love do its perfect work mm -hmm. and bring you to the revelation of what Jesus Christ, I mean, this is unstoppable, man. <laughs> when you get it, when you really get it, it's like, who can bring any accusation against me? Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm righteous, but I'm not righteous through anything I did for Pete's sake. Mm -mm. I'm righteous through what Jesus did. I mean, it's a perfect righteousness, honey. Yeah. It don't ebb and flow. Yeah. It That's doesn't. Right. It, it doesn't wane mm -hmm. when I do something wrong. I mean, good night, nurse. I remember years ago saying, you know, you know what's so wonderful about this righteousness is even when I sin, I'm righteous. <laughs> and I'm like, I hear whoa wait a minute now you've gone too far and i'm like listen if this righteousness is in, that is imputed to me through the finished work of christ can only give me righteousness when i do right what kind of deal is that i mean that's a works righteousness mm -hmm. works righteousness Let's you feel good when you do good and you feel like crap when you do bad. But the righteousness that is gifted to us by God is the very righteousness of God that never changes. Yeah. Hallelujah. And, and if I turn around and do something bad, you know what? It doesn't make me unrighteous. It's just evidence that I'm not believing that I'm righteous. Mm -hmm. yeah, I love that that we're you know perfect love casts out all fear okay oh. all fear, and it casts it out we don't deliver ourselves it's really yeah. it's really yeah. knowing the perfect love that God has always had for us um yeah. he didn't just start loving us or some say well uh that God sent Jesus so that he could love us no <laughs> It says, for God so loved the world that he said he demonstrated his love. You know, yes, he, he did. Yeah. He, it wasn't that he had to uh, send Jesus to love us, but because he did love us. And it's really having our hearts. And the enemy knows that. The enemy knows once we're persuaded about the perfect love that God has always had for us, that I was never a wretch to God. Okay. I was always a beloved child of God. I was never a wretch. I might have been a wretch in my own eyes, okay, because of the blindness and the darkness of my own eyes, but um, it's about the heart being persuaded about the love, perfect love that God has always had for us and always will have for us. And what he did to demonstrate that love when he sent Jesus was a demonstrate, was, was a manifestation really of the love of God towards us yeah. because yeah. we oh, we behold the glory of god in the face of jesus or we behold the very love of god through the son that he came as the word became flesh the word the word was made flesh and the word was and jesus was god's word of love towards us expressed to us he says no no one has ever seen the father except the son who's in the bosom of the Father. And he came to reveal him. What did he come to reveal? He came to reveal his perfect love for us. And I keep yeah. thinking, go yeah. back to Romans 8, you know, about uh, 38. This is an awesome verse to remember always. And the whole thing is 31 through 38. But he says, and Paul even said he was persuaded. So he had to become persuaded about this, okay? And he says, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, or you can say even my own stupidity, <laughs> nor any created thing shall ever <laughs> be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. And, 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 and that is God's word for us. It always has been. But um, because of that sin that was passed to us, sin and death passed to us from Adam, we became blinded to the love that God has for us. And then we felt like we had to do something. Religion feels like it has to do something to earn 
earn that love. Okay. And love, the love of God cannot be earned. <laughs> it can't be earned. Right. It can only be received. Mm -hmm. So. You know, a verse that Mueller brought up uh, is very interesting there in Romans where it talks about the gospels, the power of God unto salvation. It says, for therein is revealed the righteousness of God. Yeah. And the thing about the word revealed is that it, you, you can't reveal something that's not there. That meant it had to be there the whole time. Yeah. And and you were talking about, you know, you were, God's always loved us, but we've just been blind to it. Well, um, righteousness is being face to face with the father. But imagine being face to face with a blind man. Mm -hmm. he, he, he don't know that you're face to face with him because he's blind. Mm -hmm. And Jesus came to reveal and to open our eyes for judgment. Have I come into the world that they which are blind might see? Right. Yeah. And so we wake up to the righteousness which was there the whole time. You know, a lot of times we like to quote the verse about uh, he who knew no sin was made to be sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But when you look at the context of that, the context is the righteousness of one man. We have become a demonstration of the righteousness of God to save his children. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about judgment too, how that word judgment, because of religion, has always been we connected with some kind of form of punishment, you know, and really judgment is just decision. Exactly. I mean, I could be working on a project outside and I'm making constant judgments. I'm lining things up next to a plumb line. I'm lining things up next to a ruler. I'm lining things up to a measuring tape. Those are all judgments. Yeah. So that's uh, what came to me was the judgment of God okay, is God's mind has al already been made up about you and his love for you. And yep. he is not going to change his judgment. Okay. Amen. So, so we, we might judge ourselves unloved or unworthy of God's life, but that's not the judgment of God. <laughs> that's wow. not the judgment of God. So I see that, that, that God is bringing us back into, if you will, a, a right state of mind to seeing what has all, always been, you know, really in the mind of God towards us, the judgment of God. And so when you look at it, not in context of oh, God's angry and he's, he's going to punish people. No, the judgment of God was that he sent his only son to save us, not to condemn us. That's the judgment of God, you know, and so if there's any punishment involved, it's because we haven't believed the truth about God's love for us. We haven't received the, the, the truth of God's love. And really, it says our own heart condemns us. But if our, even if our own heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things, you yeah. know. And so God is never going to agree with a lie. Right. God is never going to agree with a lie that he's ever been angry with you. Okay. He's not going to agree with that because it's contrary to who he is. Okay. There's not two sides of God. It's not like God is love on one side, but right. don't put on his other side. <clears throat> no. And it's just, a lot of that has that double mindedness, even about God has created a lot of instability and uncertainty in the body of Christ. It's mm -hmm. really kept them from maturing and growing up into that perfect, perfect love that God has always desired to, well, like we've been saying, uh, for us to, to, to really see. Amen. He, he is faithful. Amen. You know, that word, uh, this, is, this is what really hit me this morning. Herein is our love made perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's no fear in love, but perfect love. What is perfect love? That word perfect is complete. Mm. It's mature. What is complete love? And you know, right after this, it says, verse 19, we love him because he first loved us. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> if we, That's perfect. If we say, hey, I love God and hate his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, mm -hmm. how can he love God whom he has not seen? Mm -hmm. This is the commandment. This is the precept, the principle that we have from him that he who loveth God love his brother also. Yeah. Mm. So complete love or perfect love, as I was meditating on this this morning, I <laughs> heard so clearly the circle is complete. Mm. and that just made me go wow mm. the perichoresis the circle dance mm. the perichoresis of father son and holy spirit is love loving love loving love loving love when we enter into the circle dance God is loving us, but then the evidence that we are in the perichoresis of God is we're in that love and we're receiving that love and we are loving everybody else. Mm -hmm. you, can't say you're in, you can't say you're in the dance, <laughs> but you don't want to include anybody else. Love has no respect to persons, baby. It wants to grab everybody and yeah. bring them in the dance. Yeah. That's good. So if someone comes against you that, you know, in a, a wrong way, you say, let's dance. <laughs> let's dance. Let's do Amen. the dance. That's bring it. them into the dance. That's yeah, it. that's good. You know, I'll <laughs> tell you something. I was telling Jan this morning. It had to have been, I don't know, 30, 40 years ago. I don't know. But something the Lord made clear to me, you know, the two commandments there, to love the Lord thy God with all your heart and soul and mind and to love your neighbor as yourself. The, and upon these two commandments is all the law and the prophet. Mm. Okay. This is fulfilling the royal law. And the Lord showed me he said, Beulah, when you love God, that's invisible. Nobody can see that. Mm. That's between you and me. But when you love everybody else, that's evidence of your relationship with me. And you know, I was reading Athanasius. <clears throat> the other day that is some good reading he was in like the third century one of the early church fathers and he said when when man fell man fell to the senses he no longer had any spiritual discernment he could not see the unseen he could only discern by his senses. And God stooped down and he came into our realm to the senses. Mm -hmm. So man could see and mm. touch and hear and feel the love of God made flesh. He came down to our sense realm that we can be brought up into that spiritual realm that yeah. we can believe what is unseen and then manifest it to the senses of people. How can I convince anybody that God who they can't see loves them if I, who am supposed to be a representative of God, don't love them? Yeah. It's an oxymoron. It shows the it shows the the fruit of what you're believing. That's yes, right. absolutely. So what he's saying here is, uh, if you say you love God and hate your brother, you don't really believe the love that God has for you. That's, true. That's right, brother. And you know what? You brought us right back to where you started with. 
I said, remember that word. You're bearing the fruit of what you believe. That's what you said. Bearing the fruit. The Lord brought me to that this morning. He brought forth everything to reproduce after its own kind. Yes. A yeah. peach tree brings forth peaches mm -hmm. that is going to reproduce peaches. Yeah. The love of God was shed abroad. Jesus was sown into the earth. And he says, unless a kernel of wheat fall to the ground and die, it remains alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Yeah. The fruit we are, we have been born again of the incorruptible word of God, which is love. Yes. Okay. That's what we've been born. That's the seed we've been born from. Amen. So what are we going to produce? love yes yeah that's why i like i mean to me it just brings so much clarity into that of course we know the the apostle john he was the disciple of love he's the one he was and i love that i think uh, i heard it from damon he was he wasn't just a learner he was a leaner yeah you need a lot less learners and a lot more leaners and leaning yeah. on the breast of jesus okay he received a revelation of the love that he had for him. Mm -hmm. And so he says, I'm the one. He, and he took it intimately and personally. I'm the one that Jesus loves. <laughs> All right. Well, guess yeah. what? I'm the one that Jesus loves. Yes. Okay. And it's just like when that love, intimate love and knowing, right? And this is eternal life that you may know. Yeah. The one yeah. that knows you and loves mm -hmm. you. This is eternal life. Yeah. You know, and and when that's when that love is born in your heart, okay, then the fruit of that is going to be love. The expression of that is going to be love, but it'll be an effortless, just like bearing the fruit of a tree. It'll be like you're commanded to love people. You know, it's yeah. just I remember I remember so many years ago came up to me and said, Rick, I love you. God commands me to. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I feel that real. Wow. It really touches my heart, you know, but it's really, it's that, that religious love, that's mm -hmm. a commanding love. And then the, yeah. the fruit of, of love that's born out of your life, because now your heart has been persuaded about the love. Yeah. God Absolutely. Has Absolutely. Yes. And so in Romans 10, 10, it says for with the heart. Yes. Man believeth unto righteousness. Mm -hmm. So that's where that's where the gospel is bringing us. The gospel of the love of God is persuading our heart yes. to believe we're yeah. righteous. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. There's nothing missing, nothing lacking. You are complete. Uh, there's nothing you have to do. You don't have to get on the treadmill. Okay. No. Uh, for God to love you or for you to do something to earn his favor. No. Okay. It's just like, that's the lie. You right? can't do anything. You can't. you can't. I mean, which is such a lie. I mean, what can dust do? You this know? is, you know, this is the choice we have. We can either have a works righteousness which is as filthy menstrual cloths, okay? I think I'll pass that one up. Mm -hmm. Or the righteousness which comes from God, mm -hmm. okay? Which is by faith alone. Amen. You, you believe it. Yes. That's all you can do. And if, if you can't believe that. Believe it, receive keep, it. Keep listening. Yeah. Keep listening mm -hmm. to the word of God's love until your heart is fully persuaded of what God did in Jesus Christ because he loves you so much. Exactly. And that's the righteousness of God, that God saw us in union with sin and death. And yes. that is not how I created you to be. Okay. No. Not to perish, but to um, to be full, filled with the fullness of my life, to bear the fruit of my life. Yes. So I'm coming for you. And he came yeah. to deliver us from sin and death, to take That's away right. the sin and the death 
so that we could be united to the one we we're created to be in union with. Yes, amen. amen. And that's amen. a heart, heart persuaded to believe that you'll be filled with that life. Amen. amen. And you know, when you say, I'm as righteous as God is, okay? That's a great, a, a great segue into a conversation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Because you'll see where people are at, right? You there. may start a fight right there. <laughs> well, the, the Pharisee will say, um, heresy. Well, yeah, they'll say, well, me. I, wouldn't go, me. Yeah. I wouldn't go that far, okay? <laughs> and as Damon said, you're either as righteous as God or you're like filthy rags. There's no in between. Hmm. You're either in and out, in or out. You've either got it or you ain't got it. Well, we're, we're either believing the judgment of God, which is that I have declared you righteous, innocent, holy, and complete in Christ, or we're not believing the judgment of God. Right. You know? The, and the fruit of believing, <laughs> the fruit of believing that you're as righteous as God is, and that's what the kingdom of God is, Romans uh, 14, 17. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace. peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You know, two of those are an emotion. Mm. The emotion of feel. You feel peace. Yep. You feel joy. <laughs> but righteousness is your reality. Righteousness is your right standing. And because of what Christ did, and he bequeathed to you his very own righteousness, the effect or the, the fruit of that believing is peace and joy, baby. Amen. You know, it's funny we're talking about emotions because uh, um, I was listening to a message about emotions and how that, you know, God gave us, he gave us this mind, will, and emotions. He gave us, the, he created us with this soul. And with the emotions, right? And all the senses and all that. And how that people, whether they realize or not, everyone in this world, okay, who was created in the image of God to bear his likeness, they're seeking, they're seeking for love mm -hmm. in all the wrong, but on all the wrong places. They're seeking for this life, but in all the wrong places. And that's why the apostle Paul in Acts 17, he says, let me introduce you to the one you're seeking. Right, right. And this could apply to every single person on this planet. Okay. I don't care who they are, <clears throat> what kind of religion they may be looking for life in or looking for life in whatever, in money or people or whatever. Um, <clears throat> the way that we are completely, completely uh, restored in our, like you talk about in our emotions, <clears throat> filled with the love of God is to see that our life is in Christ. Our life was, was yes. created to be in Christ. In him we live and move and have our being. And apart from him, there is no life. Right. You'll, continue, you'll continue on your quest to try and be satisfied. You know, like the Rolling Stones, you know, satisfied. I can't get no satisfaction. Yeah, I, tried, yeah. I tried and tried. I can't get it. And guess what? That's a, that's a truth for every single person. I don't care who they are. <clears throat> Because they were created to bear the to to for God to be the father of their life, to father their life. Now we're the offspring of God, but not everyone is looking to God as their father. Right. Life. Just like he told the Pharisees. He says, <clears throat> You got it all wrong. Your father's the devil. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now. yeah. You know, your father's the devil. In other words, and we talked about this. We're not saying that the devil has any capability of, of producing offspring no. or, or creating anything. He has no creative ability. What he does have is the ability to, to lie, to see, yeah. and to accuse, and all these things. And what right. Jesus was saying to the Pharisees, you're believing a lie. Because my word, the truth, the gospel, you could say the gospel, has no place in your heart that you may be persuaded to believe the truth over the lies. So your yeah. father is the devil, hmm. you know, and, and he called him a murderer. He said he was a, a, a liar. Okay. The, the devil was a liar and a murderer. 
you know, mm-hmm. and uh, the 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 words that he's speaking to people. Of course, he he persuade he has he's persuading people to believe this lie over the truth, and as they believe the lie, just like Adam did, right? There was there was darkness that came into the soul of a man, and he separated himself. Yeah. From the only true source of life we have, you know, and then he tried to cover himself up or try to clothe himself with life. Yeah. You know? And uh, and so God knows. I mean, God knows, hey, without me, there is no life, you know. And uh, so it's just like I see this message, this gospel message for everyone. And God, listen, God doesn't despise anyone. He loves everyone, and he wants everyone, none none to perish, but all to to hear this glorious gospel, so their hearts will be persuaded about who their creator is and what he's really all about. Thank God. Thank God. Yes. Thank God God our hearts were persuaded, huh? Yes. You know, it's all about what we're beholding, because what you're beholding is what you are, you know, and if we're beholding ourselves, that's what we manifest is mm-hmm. ourselves, And that has no life in itself. Mm-hmm. If we behold him, we become just like him. You know, I, I think it was Damon. I heard saying, we talk a lot about beholding the one we love and becoming mm-hmm. like him. He said, we were not the first ones. He said, God beheld us Hmm. and became as one of us to deliver us. What, I mean, when you stop and you think, when you stop and you think of almighty God, that God, he's got everything going on, that he would come down and take upon himself human flesh and suffer all that he suffered to bring us back into union. I mean, that's that's the love that we've been born of. We've got that love on the inside of us. It's mm-hmm. unstoppable, baby. Yeah. Yeah. That's you true. know, um, on Sunday, back to your Sunday message about offense, you know, uh, that is that is the number one problem in the church world today Amen. and you know it i remember years ago john bevere teaching the bait of satan oh yeah and it's the mm. bait of satan i mean you know what you it's a stumbling block scandalous scandal mm. it's a bait trap yes to uh, get the unsuspecting victim trapped you know and I remember the proverb that says that uh, a net that is um, laid in the um, sight of any bird mm. is futile. Yeah, they are going to go there. Okay, so <clears throat> let me let me put it to you this way: a bird is in a tree. And he sees this hunter. He this this hunter is coming to hunt birds. Okay. And the bird is in the tree. And he sees the hunter move all the leaves aside, put a net down, cover it with leaves, and then go with his little um trap. He's gonna pull this sucker as soon as a bird lights in it. And he goes behind the bushes and he waits. And he will wait in vain for the bird that saw him lay the trap. Amen. I mean, that has got to be one stupid bird who's <laughs> going to jump in that trap after he just saw the hunter do it. Well, the church is filled with unsuspecting birds. Birds, yes. <laughs> because they don't know. The Apostle Paul says we are not ignorant of the devil's devices. No. Well, Paul said that for himself. 
I would venture to say that the majority of Christians are ignorant of the devil's devices yeah. because they constantly step into his trap. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, James three, I keep coming back to James three. Yeah. One, mm. It says, my brethren, be not many masters. Don't be, don't desire to be a teacher. Mm. Knowing that ye shall receive the greater condemnation. You're going to receive the greater scrutiny because a teacher has to do a whole lot of talking. Okay. And this is where we slip up is in our speaking. It says, for in many things, we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. This is a mature man mm -hmm. and is able to bridle his whole body. And I love that. That word offend is not the same word as the offense of the cross, which is scandalon. This word comes from the word pipto, which comes from the word pedomai, okay? And what it means is to alight from flying. Mm -hmm. I love this. If yeah. everybody could just get this. Yeah. To fall or to alight from flying, mm -hmm. okay? And back to Isaiah 40, it mm -hmm. says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That word wait, kavor, mm -hmm. to braid together with, in union with God's thoughts, mm -hmm. you're going to fly like an eagle. Yeah, there it is. So let's see, kids, when we think what God's thinking, we're flying like an eagle. Oh, in the heights of and we can see so clearly from that perspective. Yes. Like he said in Song of Solomon, come up here and look from the Mount Hermon. Come away from the lion's dens. Come oh. away from down there and see clearly from my perspective. And mm -hmm. so you're soaring. But then when you get in conversation, mm. you can come crashing down. Yeah. Because that's what Paul's trying to get across to us in Romans 8 when he says that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Yes, it didn't say it does right. away with the law of sin and death. It just oh. takes us up above it. Right. Uh, I heard somebody compare it one time to uh, the law of lift versus the law of gravity. Mm -hmm. The law yeah. of lift that an airplane uses, it doesn't do away with gravity, but it just supersedes no. the law of gravity. That's yes, right. that's right. Absolutely. And the thing is, it's your tongue. It's what you allow to come out of your mouth that causes you to come crashing down. Because it goes on to say, behold, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us and we turn about the whole body. Behold also the ships, which they that be so great are driven of fierce winds. Yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor lifteth. Even so the tongue is a little member yeah. and boasteth great things. Yes. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. The tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body. I mean, the whole body is turned by our mouth. We engage in contradictory uh, conversation, mm. and we come crashing down. Mm. It says, it defileth the whole body and set on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Mm. Mm. And what is hell? Hadas, not to see. You can get blindsided. So you can be soaring like an eagle. Yeah. And, and listen, kids, let me tell you something. 
and Jan can bear witness to this. Years ago, we, we went to a place and uh, this guy was, uh, he, he came up under Benny Hinn and uh, he was no Benny Hinn. <laughs> and he created a pseudo environment of peace. Mm -hmm. Okay, where he played the music, but it was a false piece. It was a created piece. Mm -hmm. And there was a woman that had a bag. And she was crumpling that bag. He got so bent out of shape. <laughs> it's like so paper bag. Yes. Paper bag, that's all. To the room. He shamed this woman mm. because she was crumpling the bag. You are breathing the Holy Spirit. I'm like, good grief, Charlie Brown. Take no, he, <laughs> she's breathing the Holy Spirit, baby. She is grieving you. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. And I remember. It's hard to believe that that actually happened. Yeah. Either. But you know something, Dad felt so bad for her. He got up and he went back and sat with her in the corner. <laughs> I did. Yeah. But you see, the thing is, and this is where the rubber meets the road. You can think you are very spiritual in your four walls with your beautiful instrumental music playing and nobody coming against you. And you can think, wow, I am so full of the love of God. That's right, you can fool yourself. But then when you go out there and you meet contradictory circumstances, is it going to stand up? Because the, love, the real love of God can face anything. Absolutely. You're not going to fall apart. Amen. He doesn't and, get offended. No, absolutely not. Love doesn't get offended. That's right. You know? Listen, first of all, I'm dead. <laughs> I found a dead man. Amen. <laughs> dead to this life and I'm alive unto God. There is no such thing as offense in the kingdom of God. That's right. It's peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Why? I've arrived. I'm there. I'm seated in heavenly places Amen. in Christ Jesus. That's my perspective. But so easily in conversation, you can come from soaring uh -huh. in the heights and come crashing down. When you forget who you are, you become an enemy rather than a, a, yeah. a guest. Yeah, you know. Let me let yeah. me say that. Let me say this too. Not only when we forget who we are, but when we forget who they are. Absolutely. In the Father's mm -hmm. night, and this is what came to me when we were talking about the tongue here, because right in that context with it, he says, "With this tongue we bless God and yes. Father, and with it we curse yes. men who have been made in the similitude." Oh God. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so we we are, and th this has been on my heart here the last couple of days. And because Ephesians 4 29 talks about let no current communication proceed corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. That's right. Which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister yeah. grace to the hearers. Amen. And the, the thing that came to me was corrupt uh communication isn't uh cussing. You know, we, we've looked at that as, don't say a cuss word. No, it's not cussing, it's cursing. Right. It's cursing those who are made after the very similitude of God. Amen. Okay, it's cursing those who God loves, right. who God's, who Jesus came and died for. Amen. And it's, don't curse those who, who I have uh, blessed. You know, don't curse those who Christ came to, to die for. And it's really seeing again as the father sees others. And so if we have this attitude and it's in scripture of, I'm glad I'm not like them. I'm glad oh. I'm not like the others. Guess what? You're a Pharisee. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like them. 
you're yeah. you're you've become you've developed this Pharisee attitude Absolutely. that is based on what you've done and That's what right. you haven't done. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that somehow you've earned the love of God and earned righteousness by what you've done. And that's, that's right. True. Right. And, you know, it goes on to say uh, in verse seven, every kind of beast and of birds and serpents and things in the sea is tame and hath been tamed by mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. Now, this is very, very important. We're not trying to tame the tongue, oh. okay? It is an unruly evil. You can't tame that sucker. It's full of deadly poison. Well, where does that poison come from? Out of the abundance of the, the heart, heart, the heart, the heart speaks, yeah. okay? Yes. So we don't have a tongue problem. We got a heart problem. Yes. Amen. Yes. The heart has to be changed. Right. The yeah. heart has to be filled with what fills God's heart. Mm. And when our heart is filled with the love of God, then our tongue will bless people. Oh, it will follow. It will it. follow you. It just follows. It's just the little rudder that is being perpetuated by the heart. That's all. Mm -hmm. yeah. It says, therewith bless. And this is so good because it says, Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be. That's the problem right there. And, <laughs> and that is not a condemnation. Oh. It is an invitation. Yeah. To greater lifestyle yeah he's saying brother you don't have to put up with this there is a better way amen it says does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter yeah. can the fig tree my brethren bear olive berries either of vine figs so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh yes mm -hmm. now it goes on to say who is the wise man? Mm. You know who the wise man is? It's the bird in the tree that watched the hunter lay the trap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's not, a wise bird. You're not going to fall for it because you know the plans of the enemy. That's right. It says, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation, and that word conversation is lifestyle, mm -hmm. his works with meekness of wisdom. Yes. Mm -hmm. The wisdom that comes from God mm. is filled with meekness. Right. And meekness is not weakness. Mm -hmm. Meekness is strength under Mother control. Yeah. Mm. Strength under control. Now listen to this. Contrary wise, but if you have bitter envy mm. and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. Right. This wisdom descendeth not from above, no. but it's earthly, sensual, and devilish. Devilish. That's right. You know. I was listening to a message on this subject and it blessed me so much because he said, you know, have you ever met a person that was bitter and didn't have good reason? <laughs> good reason. Right. They got a false wisdom. That's right. They think they have a right. A right. To be bitter. A right to be bitter. <laughs> a right to be bitter. Uh, oh, my goodness. That goes back to that offense that we're talking about, Beulah, about the offense, you know, about stumbling over the truth of being trapped and, um, you know, by that lie. You know, he will, you know, the enemy will come and say, you have a right to be bitter, you know. Oh. 
<laughs> someone says someone says bitterness is like uh um what get a drinking poison right. hoping the other person will die from it right yeah <laughs> you, you could say this you have a right to be bound and gagged if you want <laughs> yeah i guess you do <laughs> i mean i mean hello it's not going to be very encouraging to you though when you get in that state yeah. You know, when I see this, though, James, I love James, you know, that we came no. into this revelation and begin to see James, the whole book of James, through the eyes of, you know, of, of the Lord and how what he was really saying. He was seeing that these people were uh, taking on a different belief system. They mm -hmm. were being persuaded away from the truth mm -hmm. because uh, there's a lot of persecution at that time. And they were being filled with fear. A lot of them were losing their own businesses and, and different things were happening. You know, they were being dispersed abroad. And they they got into this other kind of wisdom about trying to, you know, um, to seek life and to really clothe themselves with life and, 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 you know, by the strength of their own ability. So they began to give make preference to the rich over the poor. And he said, James began to see the fruit of this wrong believing. And that's what he's addressing here. And what I, yeah. I love, what I heard when, when he talks about bitterness, I see the heart of James for the people saying, this is, this is destructive. This is a destructive belief system Absolutely. that's going to bring you down yeah. in a place that down, you know, like we're yeah. talking about and not, and not bring you up to the place of soaring where your father created you to be. That's right. Yeah. Amen. If that makes any sense. <laughs> it does. 100%. <laughs> but it is a wisdom. There's two kinds of wisdoms. There's a wisdom mm -hmm. uh, that comes from God. Right. And there is a wisdom that comes from the serpent, from the world. Amen. And right. we're actually being influenced by one or the other. Yeah, That's right. absolutely. You know, I love the book of Proverbs. There, it, there's just so much wisdom there. Oh, and yeah. it, it says in uh, 1727, he that hath knowledge spareth his words. Mm. And a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. And that word excellent spirit means Cool and calm. Mm. You know, with that, remember, who <laughs> is the man that is endued with wisdom? Mm. Let him show out of a good lifestyle yeah. his meekness yes. yeah. of wisdom. Yeah. Is strength under control. Yes. yes. You know, it's like if you if you've got knowledge. Yeah, spare your words. I mean, how many times could we say, you know what? If I'd have just not said that. <laughs> you know? So yeah. let's not wait until the barn door is wait open and the wait. horses get out. <laughs> Shut the trap. <laughs> wait a minute. You can catch treasures by not doing anything. <laughs> Instead of letting them all go in your mouth. Well, he says, where is it? He says, be, be slow to, uh, swift to hear, right. slow to speak, yeah. and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not uh, work the righteousness of God. We're going back Amen. to righteousness, which is the passion, right? The passion of man, uh, yeah. not of your or striving uh, will ever, um, you know, work the righteousness right. of God. It's a gift to be received, but I see it too as... Maybe could you see it in context of sometimes we step in there and we try to be the Holy Spirit for someone else. Oh, yeah. By trying to force feed them. Mm -hmm. I mean, we get excited to share the gospel and that's good. But we have to be careful not to get in a place of, you know what I'm saying, trying to force feed someone Absolutely. and then isn't really receiving it. That's That's true, Pastor. I know that's true. At the same time... Uh, yeah. When we are trained or we become trained to the the understanding of how things work, we're not going to put that on somebody and, right. and give them the wrong uh, outlet. Well, we can get 
we can get zealous. Yeah. You can get excited. I know. You know, and, yeah. and, and you know, that's, that's what I'm trying to say yeah. is we don't want to. <laughs> <In there. laughs> it goes back to the to the meekness. Yeah. The exactly. Meekness, where we're under the the influence of the Holy Spirit. Right? Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But so we know we we know like the old saying goes. Uh, we know when to hold them, when to fold them, <laughs> yeah. when to walk away, and when to run. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to give that scripture uh, from Proverbs in one seventeen. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. Yeah. I love that scripture. Yes. If it's you true. if you know the pitfall that's been laid for you, mm. it's so easy to walk around it. If we yeah. got sense of a bird, we can go around it. <laughs> yeah. And that discernment, it really comes in with what I was, you know, there's so much more in that because I kept hearing the word discernment and offense mm -hmm. and how that people are so trapped up in offense because they lack discernment. Right. Yeah. Because they lack discernment, they can't see the trap. No, yeah. they, they can't see the snares that the enemy has been laying for them. I mean, these are good looking snares. These are like nice looking, it's free cheap. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's a nice looking snare, one to be desired, a food, right? To yeah. be desired and to make one wise. And it makes even, uh, you know, because the enemy, when he comes in, he comes as, as an angel of light. He comes mm -hmm. as a religious being. He comes speaking words of wisdom, supposedly. You know what I'm saying? That sound nice, but yeah. but are very deadly. And it's yeah. only the Holy Spirit, really, that gives us that discernment, the spirit of exactly. truth, the spirit of and without him, without him, without being under his influence, okay, looking to him, you don't have any discernment to discern these things. That's Amen. true. So and, true. And you know, the good thing about it is, I mean, you you can't lose. Okay, so you're stupid, you fall in the trap. Okay. Yeah. Just like James, yeah. he says, you know, don't be like the man that looks in the mirror, straightway forgets what manner of man he is. Boom, gets snared in the trap. Mm. Well, just as soon as straightway you fell. Straight where you recover. Straight yeah. where you What does the scripture say? Forgiving one another, even as yeah. Christ has forgiven right. you. Yeah. You know, you realize you took the bait. Yeah. You got offended. Yeah. And now you feel really rotten. Well, yeah. you get up, man. Just get rid of it. Get out just, of it. Just, just, Lord, <laughs> I forgive that person. Lord, I don't want. It's so simple. Mm-hmm. Lord, I forgive that person. Yeah. I send mm -hmm. away their offense. I don't want to carry this. I don't want to feel this in my own. Amen. And you know, you get addicted. Yeah. You get addicted to the um, effects of righteousness. Yes. Peace and joy. Yeah, yeah it shapes. You, it, it, it really uh, creates this heart, a uh, right heart of belief in you and yeah. discernment at the same time. And I was just thinking, you're seeing God that he is not retributive, but he's restorative. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's our spiritual restore. It's always about a heart of restoration, not getting exactly. Right. That's right. Exactly. And so it's so, it's so, um, it's so easy to get out of it. You know, the best thing is not to fall in the trap. Right. But we need to give the antidote should we fall in the trap right and that's just a heart of humility that says oh lord i felt i took the bait please <laughs> i forgive this person i send their sin away from me i don't want it yeah. oh lord fill my heart with love for that person and <laughs> as you begin to pray for that person your heart begins to soften Yes. Yeah. And that bitterness is turned and the love of God just straightens you right out. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, I love that. It's uh, did you have something? Well, I was just gonna say it's always the same secret, you know, that when we do 
fall for a trap or whatever. It's not to cower back and say, oh, I was so stupid, you know, and put yourself down or, you know, any of that. But instead, run to the father and say, father, you know, I need your help. It's obvious that I made a mistake. Yeah, and, yeah. And, I, and I need you to restore my heart so that I see it through your eyes, you know, rather than allow that condemnation or whatever. To oh, yeah. Because we Absolutely. are going to have times when we we take offense and then we go, wow, why did I do that? What happened? You know, Thank I you. got my eyes off Jesus or I got them onto myself or I believed a lie for a moment, you mm -hmm. know, but yeah. not to allow condemnation, but let God use it to make you stronger. Mm -hmm. to Absolutely. Enforce, you know, perfect your love. yeah, to perfect his love in you. Yeah. Absolutely. That's and good. you know something, what you said is step two of the enemy's devices. And that is, okay, he lays the trap for you. You fall into it. Now he comes to beat you over the head with condemnation. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, just oh, look at what you've done. Oh, you're, oh, in the you're so bad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's all nonsense. It's all nonsense. It is okay? nonsense. You know, um, <laughs> that brings me to Romans 12. Oh, this is so, this is a great Bible study this morning. Oh, it is. It's you. great. It's well, great. the enemy, while you're turning there, the enemy loves to push our buttons, you know. Oh, yeah. Sure. Push our buttons, and he'll do it through other people, you know, right. usually to push the button. And uh, the Holy Spirit gives us the discernment, you know, uh, the spirit of truth. And, and that's why I love us, the Holy Spirit's really helping us to see our need for him the holy spirit yes. to, walk through, to walk through this world like my friend says is walking through uh like walking through a minefield at midnight yeah, yeah. You know saying yeah. You, you've got to know where to step you've got to know how to be guided through this world because there's a lot of mind fields out there that you step on even people's pet peeve doctrines you know they could be very explosive <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> or whatever yeah. And uh, yeah. so it's really, it's really, he's given us a heart, the heart of the fathers to, oh, yeah. to respond, see and respond in and not react, not be reactive, you know, like we used to be just react, yeah. but to respond in a way that's really going to benefit them. Okay. That's right. Not yeah. just me, but them because right. yeah. So um, true. In Romans 12, 2, it says, be not conformed to this world. Now, in this world, there's a whole lot of um, drama. <laughs> you <Yeah>. think? <laughs> <laughs> that a joke. No, but, but it's like, don't be conformed <laughs> to the way that the world is. The world is up to their eyebrows in it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'll get into that. Yeah. <laughs> but be transformed yeah. by the renewing of our minds. Amen. This morning, right now, we're renewing our mind mm -hmm. to God's way of thinking and God's way of doing things, okay? And as we renew our minds, and that word renew is um it's a metamorphosis. Mm. We're actually changing our behavior will be changed by the way we think absolutely okay mm -hmm. it's not behavior modification mm -hmm. it is repentance mm -hmm. it is changing the way we think Amen. that we may be able to prove and that word prove is approve that we may be able to approve what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of god Mm -hmm. Listen, we got to get our mind renewed so we may be able to approve, which you could say allow, the will of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Lord wants to be good. He does the will of God mm -hmm. by the way you think. And you know, uh, this was so good. I heard this message. And he said, let's pretend you inherited an estate in Europe and you go there 
and you've got all of these paintings and everything, and you find this one painting in the attic, and it says Van Gogh. Mm. But there is no Van Gogh listed with this picture. Mm. So it's sent to someone who is an expert, and he does all the testing. And he comes back a month later and he says, this is an original Van Gogh. Mm. He proved the authenticity of it. Mm. Mm. He said, now, let me give you an analogy. He says, you come down with a sickness. And you get a call from a, a, a real godly person that said, I had a dream last night. And the Lord showed me that he gave you this sickness, but mm. he's going to heal you. Mm. And then a few days later, you get a call from somebody and they said, I had a dream last night. And the Lord said, this sickness is not of me. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to heal you. How are you going to approve which one is right? How are you going to prove? Unless you know the word, right. unless you know the character of your father, mm -hmm. unless your mind has been totally renewed from God is a punitive God to know that is not my heavenly father. My father is a restorative God. Yes. When I when I have evil come upon me, it didn't come from God. That's the right. scripture says in James, when a man is tempted, let him not say he's tempted by God. That's right. For God tempts no man. No man. But right. you got to know the truth in order to know what a lie is. Mm hmm and, and the more we know the truth, the more we can come into agreement with, with God. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, scripture says, I think it's in Chronicles, the Lord looks to and fro over the, the whole, whole earth, earth mm. looking for one who's so himself strong. Can't even think. So, the Lord is yeah, the eyes of the Lord are looking to and fro over the whole earth, mm -hmm. looking for one whose heart is perfect toward him. Yes. Mm -hmm. And do you know what that word perfect means? Shalom. Mm -hmm. Peace. A heart that is at peace. That's good. good word. A heart that is at peace, a heart that is at rest. Mm. A heart that is at rest is a heart that knows they have a heavenly father yes. who's watching over and going to take care of them. Amen. That's right. And yet we come to God with franticness. Oh, what am I going to do? Oh, it's getting so bad. Right. Uh, that's not what he's looking for. No. He's looking for a heart that's in agreement with him. Yeah. And he gives us that word. Amen, sister. He gives us that word to, to put our heart to rest. You know, like you said, that word of righteousness, God's righteousness towards us to bring our hearts into rest, that we bear the fruit of that peace and righteousness and joy. And that we're not fearful like Adam was when he ran from the presence right. of God, full of shame and fear. And it's uh, right. it's really about the word that your heart's being persuaded to believe, even about God. You know, so many are seeing God uh, as this uh, God that's that's not him. It's completely contrary to his character and nature. Right. You know, there's and, many many preconceived ideas that people have about what God is and they're so far off yeah and it creates they're so far off. it creates instead of instead of a, a perfect love casting out fear it actually keeps fear and uncertainty in the heart 
of people wondering and and I this word that came to me was suspicion, full of su suspicion about God. You know, can I trust yeah. this kind of God that I've been told this God is? I, I'm not sure about this God. What kind of mood he's going to be in? You know, and yeah. uh, how he sees me in in light of and all these things. And it's just like when your heart's full of suspicion, it can't be in peace. It can't be in rest. That's right. You know, no, it can't. No, back to that scripture in Isaiah 54. Because you don't fear, oppression will be far from you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So oppression comes from fear. Mm hmm if if there is no oppression and terror because you're not afraid, then what does fear attract? The very opposite of what you want. The dis. <laughs> exactly. That scripture that I quoted, I wanted to give it to you. It's Second Chronicles sixteen nine. Let me see. 16. But the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Mm. Okay? He can show himself, he can show himself strong on your behalf. If your heart is at rest, mm -hmm. which is to say he cannot show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are in a panic. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Or and afraid I, or afraid of God. And how we yeah. the fear of God is being afraid of God, which is completely uh, the opposite, you know. Counterproductive. And it's fear of God, just say this, fear of God is to stand in awe of our Father, of God, of a God for life. Yeah. It's to, it's, it's to stand in awe of Creator and His love and, and his, his, the life that He uh, created us to be filled with. But to stand in awe of God, not to be afraid of God. Amen. Right. Amen. I just want to say how... Rick, your message on Sunday was awesome. Um, just really makes you sit back and think. And I mean, some of the things that you add in there <laughs> with your humor and stuff, it's like, oh, my gosh. But think of all the times we used to do that stupid stuff. You know, kind of like open your mouth, stick foot in, and then want to back up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I just loving all the reminders because I've been – talking to the Lord about rest and being at rest mm. and how Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 says, take my yoke upon you. And mm. what is his yoke? Um, he tells you later that he is meek and lowly in heart and mm. you fi shall find rest for your soul. Yeah. Um, That's good. You know, and it's, and also in there, it's learn of me mm -hmm. and, so all of all of these messages, all of this fellowship with these reminders of who we are, what we have in him, and there's nothing that we can do to get it and to just be at rest. And I've just really just been meditating on this and just asking him just to continually remind me. Yeah. And it's amazing how. You mm -hmm. just walk through the day with a skip in your step and just he's got us. Mm -hmm. There is nothing. There is nothing that can steal this life from us. Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. You know, we are okay. whole and complete in him. We have everything for life and godliness. Yes. I am just so thankful for all of you guys and for these groups that just continually just speak the truth yeah. and love all you guys. We love you too. I I love that. He's, uh, we need a continual reminder, uh, not because it, God isn't forgetful, you know, but we are. Right. <laughs> we are forgetful. 
And we need constantly reminding of these things. And I think that's where a lot of people don't, they don't get that sometimes, you know, and that maybe that's part of the meek, you know, too, is that and just understanding, you know, that we need to constantly be reminded of these things, even though we've heard them and, and, and think we know them and are established in them. Like yeah. Peter says, I'll continue to remind you of these truths. I believe it's true. I believe that we Do need that. You know, a scripture just came to my heart in uh, Psalm 78. And this is in conjunction with the one that I just gave from uh, Second Chronicles 69. Mm. How the Lord is looking to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are at rest, mm. at peace. Mm. That's a heart that's in agreement with him. Yeah. yeah. It is totally believing him. And this scripture in Psalm 78, 40, 40 mm. it says, how oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and mm. grip him in the desert? Mm. Yea, they turned back and they tempted God and they limited the oh, Holy God. One of Israel. And I just looked that up, and it says to limit by confusion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you don't know, mm -hmm. and then it says they remembered not mm -hmm. his hand, mm -hmm. nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, just I mean, I can see this so clearly. Yes. They've got a contradictory circumstance staring mm. them in the face. Mm. And they had, they could go one of two ways. Mm -hmm. They could allow that contradictory circumstance to become big in their eyes. Mm. Or they could remember the bigness of their God and how he delivered them in past circumstances to encourage them yes. that he's going to deliver them in this circumstance. Amen. No. No. But they limited him. Right. They limited him by their unbelief. You no. know, I've got a on my little car. It says, don't limit God. Yeah. 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 I think that um, when you were reading that verse, I felt like it was a prophetic word for Annette. She's actually in the hospital this morning and going through some tests, trying to find out why she's in so much pain and going mm -hmm. through a lot. And we're just, mm -hmm. and I love that when you said that for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro through the earth to show himself strong on behalf of them mm -hmm. whose heart is perfect toward him. And I know her heart is perfect toward the Lord, you know, and that she is trusting him and that she is looking to him for the answers and um, yes. going to just let God reveal it. And so I yes. feel, like, you know, as a group, you know, since we're kind of at the end anyway, if yes. we could just pray for her, you know, that whatever she's going through, that this will be revealed and that it will come to the light so it can be dealt with and be gone yes. in Jesus name. And I want I want to step in and talk to my wife for my wife too because she will she will never she will never speak about the pain she's going through okay and she's been attacked with a lot of pain in her body the last couple months but it's going in Jesus name but it's just the you know, it's going and whatever wisdom Amen. you know that we need to you know and. Uh, it's just, you know, it's just the enemy, but it's, it's got to go, you know, go. because greater yeah. is he that's in her than he that's in the world. Right. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Yeah. Did you? Annette, did you want to say something? No, I just wanted to say thank you for <laughs> bringing it up and praying for me. And yes, amen. It's going in Jesus name. We are already healed. Thank you, Jesus. We already took our sin and sicknesses his own body we've died with him he's died it away we've risen with him he's in us we are one with him amen it just doesn't get any better than that yeah. it's all hey, rebecca i'm not going to put you on the spot but do you have anything you'd like to just add to this discussion um 
I mean, I'm just so grateful that I, I met you all and that I'm here. I'm learning so much. Um, and I just feel like I'm getting a big hug from God. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's just so much in this that I, um, that's really hitting home things I'm going through conversations I've been having questions I've had, um, yeah. just a lot. So I'm just grateful. And I'm really look forward to seeing whoever's there later tonight as well. So I can get another hug. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, does anyone feel, uh, led to maybe pray about for Annette and Deanne or and anyone else that may be experiencing challenging things in their body. I will, Rick. Okay. Thank you, Deb. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time of enriching in who you are, what we have. And it's all by a precious gift that you have given us. Yes. Father, you know everything that is going on in everyone's body here that is having issues, even our minds, Father. Yes, Father. We just thank you, Lord, by the power of Jesus Christ, that you just lift all that is coming against mm -hmm. all of the bodies, the minds, the souls, and just cast it out, Father because your life is greater. You are greater than anything in this world that can come against us. We just thank you, Father, for that life to raise up thank and you. carry us through. We have no life, Father, outside of you. Right. You are our very breath that we breathe. So we just thank you, Father, that your life just continually manifests Yes. In Annette, in Deanne's, in mine, and yes. anyone else's body, Father, that has yes. things coming against them. Yes. And we give you all the praise and glory, Lord. Yes. You are our great Father. You are our protector. You are our healer. You are our life giver. You are our peace, our joy, our calm. You are our everything, Father. Yes. Without you, we are nothing. Yes. We just give you the praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Yeah, we just get to be good receivers. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. This is good. This is good. Anyone else have any last thing you want to add to? It's been rich. It always yes. is. It just keeps getting better and better. Amen. I love it. Amen. Praise God. Well, Jimmy, do you want to close us out in a word of prayer? Well, sure. Thank you, Pastor. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this uh, meeting together. It seems to be something special that I can't put my words on it, but I know it's real. I know it's new. I know that it's refreshing. And so, Lord, I pray that you touch each one of us, build us up, Lord, in the power of your spirit, enlighten us into things that we don't even know about, yes, Lord. Yes. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to speak and, and to give praise to your name. And Lord, we just glorify your name and we look to you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good stuff. Good stuff. Love you guys. Love you.